This is the Garmin Enduro 2. It's a multi-sport smartwatch designed for serious endurance athletes that demand the most battery life from their wearable tech. The Enduro 2 features a rugged build, solar sapphire glass, advanced training tools, offline music, mapping and navigation, and a whole bunch more. And on top of all of that, it has some of the best battery specs from any device on the market today from any manufacturer. And I gotta be honest, as an ultra runner myself, this thing gets me pretty excited. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chase the Summit, and in this video, we're gonna be taking an in-depth look at the brand new Garmin Enduro 2. Before we talk about the Enduro 2 though, I wanna rewind time a bit to about a year ago when Garmin introduced the original Enduro, which I'm gonna call the Enduro 1 for the purpose of this video. At the time, the original Enduro or Enduro 1 was basically a stripped down Garmin Fenix 6X Pro with less features to maximize battery life. And at the time, this thing was an absolute beast in terms of battery life, and it still is today, but the Garmin Enduro 2 aims to improve on the original Enduro 1 in a lot of ways. You see, with the Enduro 1, in order to achieve this impressive beefed up battery spec, you had to make some sacrifices to with important features like offline music, internal storage, Wi-Fi, and built-in mapping that just weren't present on the Enduro 1, and they did this to just get the most battery life out of this thing. But when the Enduro 1 actually hit the market, there was a lot of heartburn about the price point of this watch because it was missing so many features for the sake of battery life. In fact, if you go back and watch my original review on the Enduro 1, which I'll link up here, you can drop down in the comments there and see a whole bunch of people complaining that there's no mapping, there's no Wi-Fi or music and the fact that this watch came in at 900 bucks. So let's fast forward to present day again and I'm gonna put the Enduro 1 away for a second and talk about the Enduro 2 because in this situation it's simply not the case. The Enduro 2 is essentially the exact same watch as the Garmin Fenix 7X. In fact, instead of wasting your time reading through every spec and feature of the new Enduro 2, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that you go back and watch my original Garmin Fenix 7 video that I'll link up here because everything in that video also applies to the Enduro 2 as well, because they have the same features. With all that said, you might be wondering, why does the Enduro 2 exist if it's the same watch as the Phoenix 7X? Well, there are some differences, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video today. Before we dive in, though, if you do find this video fun or interesting or educational or anything, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. Also, if you're considering picking up an Enduro 2 or a Phoenix 7X or an Epix Gen 2 or any of these watches I have on the table here, check out the links in the description down below because those links actually do help support my channel and they cost nothing extra to you. First up, let's talk about the design of the Garmin Enduro 2. And yes, it is very similar to the Phoenix 7X that I have here on the right of your screen. They are basically the same exact watch, but there are some minor differences between the two in terms of design. The first thing to note is that the Garmin Enduro 2 only comes in one version, which you're looking at here, where the Phoenix 7X actually comes in a bunch of different colors and options and materials. The Garmin Enduro 2 comes in this black DLC coated case, which is made out of titanium, which leads to a lighter weight, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And that DLC coating does provide more durability because it is a diamond like coating. Keep in mind, even though they use fancy marketing and say it's DLC coated, these things do scratch and I have proof of that with the original Enduro 1. You can see here I've got a couple of nicks on it, one notable one over here, but generally speaking, it's in pretty good shape. The DLC coating does help quite a bit, but it's not scratch proof by any means. Another subtle change to the Enduro 2 compared to the 7X is that there's some subtle accent colors around the side of the watch. For instance, on this start and stop button, you have this lime green color, and there's little lime green tick marks around the perimeter of the display here, which I think looks really nice. Another big upgrade to the Garmin Enduro 2 is that this watch now features power sapphire glass, where previously on the Enduro 1, it had Gorilla Glass with a solar lens. On the Enduro 2, you now get Sapphire Glass. And Sapphire Glass is far more scratch resistant than Gorilla Glass by a long shot. And looking up close between these two watches, this is the Enduro 1 on the left and Enduro 2 on the 
right, you can see that the Enduro 2 has a much thicker solar band around the circumference of the watch, and that's because it leads to more battery life, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The display on the Enduro 2 is exactly the same display used on the Phoenix 7X, shocker. It's the same memory in pixel display that's very visible in direct sunlight, but in the dark, it does use a backlight. It's not quite as vibrant as something like an Apple Watch or something like that, but it's very functional and a big benefit to this is that it sips power. So that leads to even better battery life. Another nice touch to the Enduro 2 is that it comes with this really nice nylon band attached out of the box. And this nylon band is extremely light, which helps when it's on your wrist, but it's also really comfortable and kind of stretchy. It's a lot more comfortable than the rubber band. It also doesn't really absorb water all that much, which is really nice. And on top of the ultra fit nylon band, that's pre-installed on the watch. Inside the box, they also include a standard black silicone band if you prefer that kind of band instead. It's good to have options and I'm glad they included this in the box because this is an expensive watch and we'll talk about that in a minute. Just like the Garmin Phoenix 7X, the Garmin Enduro 2 does have a flashlight actually built into the case of the watch and you can access this by double tapping this top left button here or diving into the menu system. I like double tapping the button myself. You can see there it is quite bright and something they changed is that the Garmin Enduro 2's flashlight is actually twice as bright as the Phoenix 7X's flashlight. It got twice as bright, which is pretty impressive. And you do notice this in practice. I gotta be honest, I freaking love the flashlight on this thing. When I first got the Phoenix 7X, I thought it was kind of a gimmick, like why would I need that in my watch? But now that I have it, I hate giving it up when I'm wearing something else on my wrist because this thing's just so handy if you drop your keys in your car or you're trying to find your kid's toy under the couch or something. Like I said, the Garmin Enduro 2 and Phoenix 7X are basically the same size. They're both a 51 millimeter diameter watch, which is on the larger side compared to other watches. You can see here, I've got something like the Garmin Foreigner 255, which is a 45 millimeter watch. And compared to these 51 millimeter watches, it's a pretty big difference. However, even though these watches have a larger footprint, they're pretty light. And that's something that's pretty surprising about the Enduro 2. The Garmin Enduro 2 comes in at just 64 grams without the band, so that's just the case only, where the Garmin Phoenix 7X comes in at 68 grams with the titanium version. So the Garmin Phoenix 7X is four grams heavier than the Enduro 2. So yeah, I'm not sure what kind of magic they've done here to make the Enduro 2 four grams lighter than the 7X, given all the specs and battery life, but they did. So there's that. And of course, if you're curious, this is what the Enduro 2 looks like on my men's 165 millimeter circumference wrist. You can see next to it, I do have a Garmin Foreigner 955, which is a 46 millimeter watch. And you can see the size difference there is quite noticeable. Oh yeah, and in terms of pricing, we haven't talked about that yet. It's a little bit steep. The Garmin Enduro 2 comes in at $1,099 here in the USA. That's probably gonna be different wherever you are. So about 1100 bucks for the Enduro 2. And if you compare that to the Garmin Phoenix 7X I have here, this comes in between $899 or $1,000, depending whether or not you wanna go with Solar Sapphire or the standard solar version. These are not cheap watches, and we'll talk about that near the end of this video, but just know that the Enduro 2 is about a $100 premium on top of the Phoenix 7X for the additional features you get here. So what do you actually get for that extra 100 bucks other than the free band in the box? Well, first, let's talk about battery life because that's really the standout feature here. You may wanna screenshot the specs I'm about to put on the screen because there's a lot to go through here. So first off, let's talk about standard smartwatch mode. This is everyday standby mode when you're just reading text messages on your watch, checking the time of day, looking at your calendar, that sort of thing. In that mode, you'll get up to 34 days of battery life on the Enduro 2. And if you sprinkle a little bit of sunlight on the solar panel of the watch, you'll get up to 46 days. Now let's talk about GPS modes because that's where it gets kind of crazy. In GPS only mode, which gets you the most battery life at the sacrifice of a little less accuracy, you're looking at 110 hours with no solar and 150 hours if you get some sunlight. And finally, we can talk about the comical max battery GPS mode, which really crushes your accuracy for the sake of battery life. There you'll get up to 714 hours with the solar feature being used. So that's pretty ridiculous. I'm not sure 
anyone actually needs that. In most cases, you could use GPS only, and I think 150 hours is enough for most people. I'm not sure what kind of witchcraft or magic Garmin did here with the battery life on the Enduro 2. Is it a physically bigger battery in there? Is it more efficient processing power and chipsets? I really don't know. I only know that the Enduro 2 is one of the best on the market at this point in time in terms of battery life. And in my testing, I've gone out on several runs with this watch and I've been wearing it for a couple of weeks. These battery specs hold up. This thing is an absolute beast when it comes to battery life and I'm pretty impressed by it. Okay, with battery life out of the way, what else is new on the Garmin Enduro 2? Let's talk about mapping and navigation for a second because that's a big upgrade as compared to the original Garmin Enduro 1. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the Enduro 2, unlike the Enduro 1, comes preloaded with multi-continent topoactive maps installed out of the box. This gives you incredibly powerful navigation tools right on your wrist with no internet connection required. You've got fully rootable base map, course creation tools, back to start features, and a point of interest database, all pre-installed on the watch out of the box. Even though the mapping and navigation is nearly identical to the Garmin Phoenix 7X, the Enduro 2 does have a couple of tricks up its sleeve. First of all, we've got a new feature called Next Fork. This is a new feature added to the map screen on the Enduro 2. This is basically a small widget that floats over your map view that's displayed in the corner and it displays the next fork or in intersection or junction coming up on the trail that you're traveling on. It doesn't have to be a trail, it could be a road or a, or a bike path or anything like that, but I think the purpose of this feature is designed for trail runners and hikers specifically. On this little overlaid widget, there'll be the distance remaining to the next junction or intersection in the trail, along with the actual name of the trail that's coming up. This is a really slick new feature, and I love seeing the name and distance of the upcoming trails before I reach the junction. It gives me an idea of what I need to decide on when I get to that intersection, and it makes navigating a lot easier. Another new feature with the trail running activity on the Garmin Enduro 2 is the addition of the grade adjusted pace metric. Grade adjusted pace estimates the equivalent flat land pace for a given running effort or pace on a hilly terrain. Grade adjusted pace can be displayed as a data field within your activity and it's also saved to Garmin Connect so you can actually view your average grade adjusted pace after your activity is complete. This is pretty similar to what Strava already does. You can actually view your grade adjusted pace on Strava but now it's available in Garmin Connect as well and you can view it in real time as a data field on the watch. The next new feature I want to talk about on the Enduro 2 is specifically for ultra runners. There is an ultra run activity on the Enduro 2 that's actually available on the Garmin Phoenix 7X as well, but it's a little bit different on the Enduro 2. You see on the original Garmin Phoenix 7X within the ultra run activity you can see here, within this activity you can actually trigger a rest timer. Rest timers are used for ultra runners in ultra marathon environments. When you get to an aid station, you can trigger the rest timer to let your watch know that you're resting or taking in food or water, and then you're gonna continue on with your activity. All all this data is synced over to Garmin Connect, so you can view your periods of rest and try to optimize your race strategy for the next race, which is really cool. The problem here on the Phoenix 7X is that it's a manual process. You'd have to go and click the button to trigger the rest timer, and then when you leave the aid station, you have to remember to click it again to let the watch know that you're moving again. Now in the Garmin Enduro 2, they've incorporated something called the auto rest timer, which does exactly what you think. But if you look in the settings here, there's a couple of options. I can dive into the rest settings and you can see I can turn off the rest timer altogether. I can have it trigger when I stop or I can set custom where I just manually trigger the rest timer with the button. Now the automatic rest timer will actually start a rest timer every time I stop. And that's the assumption that every time you stop is that you're at an aid station, you're taking a break, you're sitting down on the trail and taking a nap, something like that. And you wanna capture all that data to analyze it after the fact. I'm completely on board with the idea behind the automatic rest timer, but in practice, it wasn't perfect. I found that when I was hiking at a slow pace up and downhill, that the rest timer would actually turn on and think, I was at a stop or when I was walking uh, just to catch my breath or something the rest timer again would kick on and if you're unaware if you've never run an ultra marathon that's a hundred miles long there's a lot of walking I hate to spoil it for everybody but ultra runners are more like ultra joggers or ultra walkers because there's a whole lot of walking that goes on in a really long distance like that unless you're like the tippity top elite athlete which I am not. I think the implementation is great but I do wish there was some customization like a threshold on speed maybe where if you're walking below one mile per hour it thinks you're resting but if you're walking at three miles per hour that's kind of a jog. At this point it's not perfect but I do like where they're heading with this. Just know that the manual trick 
trigger is probably gonna be more reliable for you until they refine this a little bit more. And with that, let's talk about GPS accuracy. Like I said, when we were talking about the battery specs, the new Enduro 2 has multi-band GPS technology, which is kind of the gold standard in terms of accuracy. And you can learn all about that in my Garmin Phoenix 7 review that I posted a while ago. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting anything different in terms of GPS accuracy between the 7X and the Enduro 2. And spoiler, there isn't really a difference. In multi-band GPS mode, these are two of the best watches on the market in terms of GPS accuracy. And even if you dial it back to that GPS only mode that gives you up to 110 or 150 hours with solar, it's still really good. I found that even under heavy tree cover or a heavy cloud cover or running in the rain or by bigger buildings or houses, that accuracy was always spot on with the Enduro 2 and the 7X. So yeah, I'm not gonna beat that drum too long. I've taken this watch out on a ton of different runs in different environments on the trail and road and compared it to a whole bunch of different watches and it's really good, so no surprises there. And now that we've talked about the GPS performance of the Enduro 2, let's talk about the heart rate accuracy from the built-in optical heart rate sensor on the back of the watch. Again, I wasn't expecting any surprises here. This is the exact same sensor we saw on the Garmin Phoenix 7X, which is on the left side of the screen here. It's the same sensor, so Yes, I got very similar results. This new Elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor from Garmin is really good. But the thing to consider is that this is a larger watch. If you have very small wrists and you're wearing a big watch like this, it could lead to the watch moving around a bit on your wrist while you're running. And if your watch moves around or light gets underneath it, it can result in worse or less accurate heart rate performance from that optical heart rate sensor. Now that we've gotten this far into the video, I wanna talk about a couple of things that are missing on the Garmin Enduro 2. First of all, the Garmin Enduro 2 doesn't have any of the new features that came out on the new Garmin Forner 955 that are actually in beta on the Garmin Phoenix 7 now. You can actually get these new features on the Phoenix 7, but they're not present on the Enduro 2, and I thought that was weird. These are features like the morning report, HRV status, training readiness, and the race calendar that are all on board the $499 Garmin Forner 955, but are not on board the $1,100 Enduro 2. I did ask Garmin about this, and they stated that they will continue to make the Enduro 2 as up-to-date as they can with other premium devices in their lineup with newer features, and this should come in a firmware update down the road. But they didn't make any promises there, so it is what it is right now. I think on launch day, it's gonna be missing these features, but we might see them coming soon. And on that note, I'm also curious to see if some of these new features from the Enduro 2 make their way over to the Garmin Phoenix 7 lineup. Like that new Next Fork overlay or the new automatic rest timer, it seems like that would be easy to bring over to the Phoenix 7. But again, time will tell. I can assume it will, but anything could happen. Okay, we've made it all the way to the end of this video and now it's time for final thoughts. Who's the Enduro 2 for? To be honest, this is a really exciting release to me personally as someone who's really heavily invested into trail and ultra marathon running. It seems like Garmin listened to the rather small user group out there in this space and made what's arguably one of the best watches on the market for ultra running. And not only is the Enduro 2 great for ultra marathons, but it's also going to be great for any endurance sport. And that could be anything from a through hike to an FKT attempt to an Ironman or a triathlon. Any of these kinds of activities the Enduro 2 will excel at. And the real beauty of this is that this time around, there's no sacrifices on the Enduro 2. It's basically got everything the Phoenix 7X has, just with longer battery life and a few extra features, and that just wasn't the same on the original Enduro 1. On the other hand, even though I just gave this thing a lot of praise, I am a little bit confused by the existence of the Enduro 2. It's just so similar to the Phoenix 7X, with the exception of beefed up battery specs, a brighter flashlight, and a few extra features. I sort of wish the Enduro 2 was the Phoenix 7X and the Enduro 2 just didn't exist. Like if they could have buried the Enduro 2 into the Phoenix 7 product line, I think it would be less confusing for consumers out there. Then again, it is a more expensive watch. It comes with the free band and it is a bit different, but I can't help but wonder, why is not a Phoenix, why is it not a Phoenix? But at the end of the day, if you're an ultra runner, endurance athlete, or anyone participating in multi-stage or multi-day activities, the Garmin Enduro 2 should be near the top of your short list of devices to look at. That is if you can afford this thing because 
because like I said, it's not cheap. All right, I can't believe it, but we've actually reached the end of this video. And if you're still watching, you probably enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider hitting that thumbs up and subscribe button down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. And again, if you're interested in picking up an Enduro 2, a Garmin Phoenix 7, an Enduro 1, a 255, a 955, any of the watches that I've shown off in this video, check out the links in the description down below because they help support this channel. They help me keep doing this thing I'm doing. And if you buy stuff, I get a little kickback and it costs nothing extra to you. So I appreciate it. And on that note, I will have a bunch more content around the Garmin Enduro 2 coming on this channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I plan on doing a comparison video to the Coros Vertex 2 because these things are kind of like a match made in heaven when it comes to a comparison. And they've gotten a lot in common. It's gonna be a tough battle. And now I wanna hear from you. Are you interested in the Garmin Enduro 2? If you are, make sure to drop down in the comment section down below. Let me know what features sold you about it or if you're gonna go ahead and just order the older Garmin Enduro 1. And if you did, how good of a price did you get on this thing? Let us know in the comments down below. And that's it, we've made it to the end of the video. I can't believe we made it. Congratulations for watching this long. I can't believe you did that. I probably forgot something, I always do, but I tried my best, I tried my hardest. Okay friends, I'll see you next time. Bye.